Hello folks, StylePoint here, and today we're going to be implementing the uh, Gaussian Area Linear Units, aka the uh, GELU activation function. Now, GELU is an activation function that is used a lot in transformers, especially the uh, language transformers. So I thought covering this uh, activation function in a series would be informative and helpful. So let us do that. But before we're going to jump into the uh, implementation, let us first discuss what is GELU, what is its equation, basically. Um, uh, how does it look like what is its plot uh, and how it compares to other activation functions like ReLU, for instance. Okay, so let's dive into this here. Um, this is the GELU activation function. This is how it looks. And this is its uh, equation here as a legend. So GELU of X is X times CDF of X, which is the same as X times this expression right here. One plus uh, ERF or ERF, as I call it. Um, x over square root of 2 over 2. Okay, we're going to talk about this this equation uh, in a bit here. But looking at the uh, at the plot here, okay, the first thing we notice is that it's very similar to to the uh, ReLU activation function. Well, I mean, the name itself kind of hints at that, right? GELU. Kind of similar to, uh, uh, to ReLU in a way. E even the name is similar, right? And this is ReLU right here, okay? We can alternate between these two. And we see that GELU and ReLU, of course, they're similar, but... GELU is like a smoother variant of ReLU, right? This is ReLU. We see that it's like, you know, it's pretty much two lines joined at this point right here, the center point. But with the uh, GELU, we have this smooth transition. We have a little a little dip here, but it, it comes back up. So that's like the first difference we see here, right? Um, in terms of like the benefits of GELU, um, it has a lot of the benefits that ReLU has, right? For the positive inputs, we're going to have... Uh, uh, positive outputs, right? Uh, it kind of allows neuron to have like a, a, a kind of stronger opinion to express a stronger a stronger opinion than some of other activation functions like sigmoid, right? Uh, if we take sigmoid here, one of the problems with sigmoid, as we know, is that uh, it squashes uh, values into a zero one interval, which again is one of its powers, but one of its kind of features, which is a good feature, we can map a value to a probability pretty much. But it comes with this kind of a trade-off that uh, it does not allow neuron to express itself as well as like a gel you. And in addition to that, sigmoid has these like really like three parts, like the low tail, the uh, the high tail, and like the, the middle part, right? So it's like no, yes, and like maybe part, okay? With gel you, for positive inputs, we see that uh, um, much like ReLU, we have like positive uh, output. So unique inputs are mapped to unique outputs in case of positive values. So that's super cool. Now, um, one little improvement over value is that for even for some negative inputs, we're going to have negative, uh, we're going to have unique outputs. So uh, um, we're not going to have the entire negative like domain. If we take like the negative x in ReLU, that's going to be mapped to zero, right? So but but in GELU, that is not the case for all the x's. Okay. Um, and so that's especially not the case for x's uh, uh, in the interval minus one zero, and that interval is kind of like kind of important because uh, the probabilities usually that's from zero to one, but if you flip the probabilities, right? Well, if you multiply that by minus one, not really flip, uh, you're going to get the interval minus one zero, right? And while that is not probability, um, it's still you know numbers in the uh, minus one zero interval uh, they're kind of common. Okay, so uh, allowing a neuron uh, to kind of properly activate these values and, uh, you know, proper activation can also be like a, a bit vague of a notion, but uh, allowing neuron to basically map unique uh, uh, inputs in the uh, minus one zero interval to unique outputs, I think that's that's one of the strengths, uh, strengths of GELU basically over ReLU you know, in case of, uh, sorry, ReLU here, right here. Um, all of the negative numbers are mapped to zero. So uh, here in GELU, we don't have that. Now, while this is like the strength of GELU, um, the way we achieve this is kind of using this expression right here that I'm going to talk about in a bit here. Um, it, of course, in terms of the, you know, like the speed, it, it's slower than ReLU. Um, now, if we run this on a GPU, we're going to see that in practice, it's not a lot slower. Okay, it's, it's kind of similar. But of course, uh, what ReLU does is that we just do the max on 0 and x, and that can be implemented using like a ternary if operation. While here, we have to do like the multiplication, x times, you know, division, 
x over square root of two, do the earth of that, add one, and you know, divide that, and so so a lot of operations here. Okay, so we we have this little trade-off here that we uh, we have a, a bit of a performance penalty, but uh, um, it it may be worth it for for this kind of uh, uh, like power, the expressiveness that we get. Okay, um, so that is basically looking at the plot, some of the differences that we see. But now we want to take a look at the uh, like the equation itself and see what what that means actually. Like what is x times CDF of x, and how do we get this plot here? Okay, so. GLU is x times CDF of x. What is CDF? Well, CDF stands for the uh, cumulative distribution function. Right here. So I pulled this up. This is the Wikipedia page for the cumulative distribution function. Um, and so this is what it is. So in probability theory and statistics, the cumulative distribution function CDF of a real valued random variable x or just distribution function of x evaluated uh, at x is the probability that x will take a value less than or equal to x, okay? So the CDF is the of x is the probability that x will take a value less than or equal to x. That's all we need to know about it, okay? And if we want to take a look at the plot, this is how it looks, okay? This is the accumulative distribution function. And it can be expressed using uh, what's known as the error function. And here is the uh, Wikipedia page for the error function. Now, there are better sources than this, but I just wanted uh, kind of like a quick, quick and dirty uh, uh, pages here so uh, I could uh, um, explain what's going on. The error function, um, often denoted uh, by ERF, is a complex function of a complex variable defined as follows, okay? Um, now, the cool thing about this, um, it, it says that it's a complex function of a complex variable, but the cool thing is that if the function argument is real, then the function value is also real. Okay, so that is something that we're going to use. And this is how it looks, as I said, okay? I'm not going to talk a lot about the error function. I just want you, uh, uh, um, well, this is not how the error function looks. Uh, uh, this is how the uh, error function looks, okay? Uh, um, but this is how the... Uh, cumulative distribution function looks, which can be expressed using the error function. So one plus error function evaluated at x over square root of two over two, that's the CDF basically. Okay, so looking at this plot here, um, it kind of reminds us of uh, another uh, activation function actually. Okay, so that, that reminds us of the sigmoid activation function. So this is the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. This is sigmoid. They kind of look, you know, similar, right? Um, I mean, sigmoid is like a, a bit smoother, right? Here, like the, the upper tail, the lower tail, they're, they're kind of like flat. In case of sigmoid, they're like smoother, like there's a smoother transition here and here as well. But they look kind of similar. And so one might be asking like, you know, why are we multiplying x by CDF of x? Uh, couldn't we multiply x by the uh, sigmoid of x? Right? We're pretty much, looking at the formula itself, we're pretty much scaling x by the CDF of x. Right? We, we're scaling the uh, linear function by the CDF. And this is the, uh, um, where is the CDF? Right here. Okay. We're scaling the linear function by the, uh, uh, the CDF. Couldn't we scale it by the uh, sigmoid as well? Right? They're similar. And the answer is yes, and there is actually an activation function uh, called swish that does that. And we're going to have a separate video about that. Uh, uh, but that's that would be like a good thought to have. Um, but for now, we're just scaling x by the CDF of x. Okay. Now, uh, um, this is basically what is GLU and how it looks, and uh, we compared it to ReLU. Uh, we pretty much see that it's a bit more expressive than ReLU, actually. So... Um, now what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and implement this in PyTorch. Okay. Uh, before doing that, we need to be able to compute the uh, gradient or derivative of GLU as well. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do that as well, of course. So let's go, go, into, uh, go into here. The first thing we know is that GLU of x is x times CDF of x. And we also know that that's x times uh, 1 plus earth the error function over square root of 2 um, over 2, okay? That's, that's the definition of the, uh, uh, um, that's the definition of the GLU, okay? And once again, CDF can be expressed as this right here, 
Okay. Um, now, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, basically try to find the uh, derivative of this, like this. Okay. I'm not going to actually use this formula for finding the uh, the, der the uh, derivative for of this, uh, but we're going to, of course, use this for actually uh, uh, doing the uh, forward pass. Okay. So so this is the multiplication. Okay. Nothing difficult here. We know everything about you know the finding uh, derivative of the multiplication. So what is this? It's eight prime b plus uh, a b prime. So the the uh, derivative of a times b is a prime b plus a b prime. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here x prime c d f of x plus um, x c d f prime x okay nothing difficult what is the uh, the uh, x prime well that's c d f of x uh, what is well that's just x what is the derivative of the c d f well it follows from the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus that it's, it's just the uh, pdf of x so the probability uh, 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 density function at x and uh, in this case, that's going to be a, a probability density function uh, of the normal distribution. Okay, so this is the uh, derivative of the, uh, uh, the GLU activation function. Now we go ahead and implement this. The first thing we need here is we need the CDF. And we can do that by saying that's one half. We can do just 0.5. That's going to be a bit faster than doing division. Um, one plus torch dot earth of data over two to the power of, well, we can do something like um, two to the power of uh, 0.5, I guess. And the reason we, we can do that is because uh, the operator precedence, the way it works is that uh, it's going to do the exponentiation first. So it's going to do the square root of two first, and then it's going to do division. Um, next, we're going to return data times CDF, right? That's the way it works. It's X, in this case, that's data, times the CDF of X. That we're done pretty much, except for we know in the uh, backward uh, uh, method in, for the uh, backpropagation, we still need to reuse the uh, CDF, so we better store it. So, well, we also need the uh, X itself, the data itself. So uh, we can do contacts that save for backward. So what this will do is that it would save the uh, uh, save some of the things that we pass for the backward method, as the, uh, the uh, method name or the operation name itself suggests. So we're gonna save data and a CDF. And now in a backward method, we're gonna go ahead and unpack this. So data and CDF, well, we can unpack it this way. Uh, that's going to be contacts that save tensors. And we can go ahead and uh, then get the uh, uh, PDF at X. The PDF value, the way we can do it is that uh, because it's for the uh, normal distribution, uh, we can do towards that distributions dot normal at zero one. Well, for zero one, um, we can do the log prob. It has this method called log prob. It gives the uh, uh, logarithmic probability. Uh, at data, but then we exponentiate it so that we get the actual probability. And finally, we do the chain rule. So we do grad output times, um, well, in this case, it's CDF of X plus data times CDF of X. So, uh, PDF of X, sorry. So it's going to be uh, uh, the uh, CDF plus data times PDF of X. PDF is this PDF uh, uh, value. So data times PDF value. Done. This is the entire implementation of the GLU activation function. And it's like a from scratch implementation, pretty much. And we ran the uh, grad check here. So what's the grad check? It's the uh, testing code that we have. What it does is that it compares our gradient approximations with the numerical approximations. And if they're close enough, it's going to say grad check successful. If they're not close enough, it's going to say grad check unsuccessful. And we might potentially have you know some problems. But in this case, we don't have any problems. So grad check successful. That's super cool. Um, so this is like more of a manual approach of implementing GLU. But I'm also going to show you the uh, uh, like the one of the PyTorch perks that allows us to implement it in like uh, uh, fewer lines of code. Or it's not going to be as as we're not going to have like the backward method pretty much. So we can import torch torch.nn as nn. Then we do inheritance for uh, using the nn dot module inheritance done right here uh, and uh, then we just implement the forward method. The backward method is automatically derived for us because Torch knows how to compute gradients for the built-in operations. So in this case, these are multiplication, addition, division, exponentiation, and ERF. For all of these operations, Torch knows how to do these uh, automatically. So how to do uh, uh, um, autograd with these. 
and um, because it has the uh, AutoGrad engine built in. So only thing we need to change is the API. Here, uh, because we're using torch.autograd function, we need to uh, we needed to do a uh, uh, gelu.apply. In this case, we just do the uh, gelu like this because usually, I mean, that's how it works with nn.module. You just initialize the class and then you can use it. And grad check was successful for this as well. Okay, so uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment in the comment section. And I'm going to see you next time with the uh, swish activation function.